us here now is Harmeet Dillon, chairwoman of the Republican National Lawyers Association. Harmeet, you say this is a start, but this needs to be one of many such motions to keep up this momentum. Explain for us. Well, thank you, Laura. So two weeks ago, there was this unprecedented raid on the president's home, the former president's home. And one of the things that they asked for today is the appointment of a special master. So to unpack that, Normally what happens after a uh, execution of a search warrant like this is that the Department of Justice assigns a separate team of prosecutors to look over those materials to suss out anything that's privileged or otherwise should not be seen by the main prosecutor. So in the time that it's taken you know, to get to this point, it may already be the case that the DOJ has already gone through that process and handed off a bunch of documents to the prosecutors on the case. Now, if you trust them, uh, that is the DOJ prosecutors assigned on either side of that to do the right thing, then no problem. But if you don't trust them, then this sort of uh, appointment of a special master that, that is an independent lawyer or former judge or what have you to oversee that process independently, uh, that should already have been done. So, you know, I, I hope it, it isn't too late for that particular motion. But some other things that need to, need to be considered are, is this judge, Judge Bruce Reinhardt, who's clearly shown himself to be biased, is he the correct person to be ruling on these issues? Should there be a motion to recuse that judge? It's always risky to file such a motion. Um, there is mention in this uh, filing today of return of property. I don't think it is really fleshed out. So hopefully, I think maybe the Trump team is waiting for the rulings on Thursday after Judge Reinhardt looks at the redaction requests and some other issues to see to see about that and get more direction on that. But I think this is just the first step. There needs to be a very aggressive response to this because this is not just about President Trump. This is about the Fourth Amendment. This is about the executive branch of government. This is about whether the Espionage Act even should apply at all to a former president under these circumstances. So for all of these reasons, it is deeply troubling, and I'm glad to see them taking this first step. There need to be a lot more. Harmi, like, like clockwork, we knew this was going to happen. The New York Times tonight got a leak from the feds saying that Trump had more than 300 classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Among the items they knew were missing were Mr. Trump's original letters from the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un and the note that President Barack Obama had left uh, Trump before he left office. Harmeet, it goes on and on. Um, and they always source people with familiarity of the case. But it, whether it's the National Archives folks or them in, in conversations with DOJ, somebody gave that information to Maggie Haberman, who is, you know, she's a, she's a good reporter. She's, she, she takes this stuff and runs with it. But this is what happened in Russiagate, is it not? It's drip, drip, drip. Laura, the very fact that this is how the United States Department of Justice plays its games uh, should be front and center in a motion about about uh, a special master. That type of shenanigan is exactly what got a special master appointed in the Project Veritas case, where the FBI raided American journalists on a very flimsy pretext because of Ashley Biden's diary. And so here, similarly, I think that is actually something that can be used on the offense. It is improper for the DOJ. It is a violation of the DOJ's regulations. It's a violation of law to use the press in this manner. And, and frankly, even after you uh, set aside all the hype in that article and t take it at face value, uh, so what? I mean, we learned during the Hillary Clinton email scandal that overclassification is rampant. Hillary Clinton wasn't even the former president. And, you know, it, 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 it still is not an excuse 18 months after this person has left office to raid his home. And one of the good things that this motion does today is tell the story of how President Trump's team was cooperating all along. It was his own house. He put an extra lock. And the next thing you know, there are 30 FBI agents there. So that's but crazy. But now, so Harmeet, I don't Harmeet think let me just jump in. Cleans yeah, it up. But, but now the, the scuttlebutt is about when are we going to get the internal surveillance video of the storage room. And then there's another storage room. You know, it, it, but it, this so reminds right. me of what happened during the Mueller investigation. To keep the, the narrative same, going the politically, playbook. they have to do this. It's, it's the same playbook. We've seen it from day one. And there is a network. There is a, there is a corrupt symbiotic relationship between the mainstream media 
and the uh, and the Solons who control the Department of Justice. Uh, and so, this should not be the case for any American. This is how they play it at every level, and it needs to stop. And if Merrick Garland had any integrity, he would be coming out and holding a press conference right now, talking about the outrageous behavior of the Department of Justice and the investigation that he is going to ask to be held into these leaks. And, and, and the violations of DOJ policy. You don't see him doing that because this is a feature and not a bug of the system. Oh, I love that line. Harmeet, we're going to find out who leaked that information to Maggie Haverman. Like, we're going to find out who uh, leaked the draft opinion in the Dobbs case. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath on either of those. Uh, but, Harmeet, you've given some great uh, insight tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you.